I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Hey, I want to welcome Craig back. We missed you last month. I'm the happiest person in this room. <laughs> I bet, guarantee you. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad to see that Tracy's made it. Mary, you want to take the roll call? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? <laughs> Commissioner Lewicki? Yep. Commissioner Allegria? Present. Commissioner Withers? Here. Commissioner Reed. Here. Commissioner Merrill. Present. Thank you. All right. So first thing on our agenda is elections of new officers. So at this time, I would take nominations for a new chairperson. I would like to nominate uh, Debbie <coughs> Smith. All right. Nominations. Um, Tracy. He's on mute. I need to hand over the gavel to you, oh, or do you want me to hand it to Pam? I don't want to. Uh, your secretary treasurer, if you can't take oh, it, okay, you're going to sure, sure. can't vote, can't really have to vote on ourselves. Oh, well, I see. Okay. Can't have to vote for us. I mean, um, Tracy, we're going to hand it to Pam. <clears throat> oh, he really is out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look how pretty it is. Are there any other nominations? Is there a motion? We don't need a motion. We don't need a motion? <laughs> so now you have to say if no other nominations. If no other nominations, then Debbie Booth Smith is the president chair of Sunset. Thank you. <laughs> Good job, Pam. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for the confidence you have in, my, in myself. Um, let's do vice chair. I'm sure I nominate Rebecca Reed, oh. vice chair of this August body. Okay, we have a nomination for Rebecca Reed. Anybody else? Any other nominations? Hearing none, Rebecca, you are now the vice chair. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, nominations for secretary treasurer. I would like to nominate Paul Luiki. I think Tracy's trying to talk. <laughs> He's currently on mute. He's. I can't unmute him. He's muted himself. Tracy, you're, Tracy, you're muted. We can't hear you. Unmute. There. Okay. There. So Unmute. I would just like to second that nomination. Um, uh, recent activities, uh, Mr. Paul has, uh, this allows him to do a position that he can grow his uh, knowledge in. <laughs> like he doesn't have enough knowledge. Yeah, right. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you, Tracy. Is All there right. any other nominations for Secretary Treasurer? All right. Paul is our new Secretary Treasurer. So with that, we will need to have the <clears throat> cards changed. Yes, so we will need to do a motion. Um, does somebody want to make a, shall we do it now? Make a motion to put Paul on our bank accounts. So we have to take Pamela off. Mm -hmm. And we have to take Tracy off. And take Rebecca. Oh, put them on? Okay. Do you want me to make the motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we take Pamela and Tracy off of the bank cards and add Rebecca Reed and Paul. Also, Wiki. Okay, we have a second. Any discussion? All right, then stay on. I stay on. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that is done. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, any changes to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public comment. Start with anybody on Zoom? I show nobody on Zoom. Any from here? No public comment, okay. Moving right on to the approval of the last month's board minutes. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Pamela? Um, Secretary Treasurer's Pamela Allegri is not Piano. Oh, a little typo there. Where at? Page six. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, on the, on, on, on the little um, box there, too, instead of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other? All in favor of passing the minutes with the corrections, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Minutes passed. Reports from the chair. Um, I'll go ahead and start this month. Um, just thank you for having the confidence in me to continue for another year. We have a lot of work left for us to do, and it's going to be busy and we're going to push you guys, and I'm really sorry about that, but we're going to get a lot done this year. I have a list. So, um, I missed the parade. I kind of wanted to be there, and other things popped up, so I hope it was a success. I don't know if anybody... On the fourth Yeah, and we worked, so we had a we had street a great car. car. Did you have a... Was you at the street car? Did you participate? Because wasn't the street car there? How many people did we have, Joe? Uh, one, two, Thank you for doing that. That was great. Um, and that's, I think, all I have. Guillermo, you want to go? Uh, yes, uh, great to be here. Um, I, I got to say, I didn't show this with you. You know, I make it a point when I, when I have time, there's a driver out there, I always say, hey, Thank you for your service. I know all, every, everybody's so receptive and nice and very uh, appreciative that I stopped and said hello. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and I, I'm assuming that attitude carries or carries, you know, all through the day with our customers. So, so I'm sure that. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, I just uh, would like to uh, say that I, I really appreciated the good process that we went through the budget and to you know develop a good working budget for us for this next year um and i would be really pleased to see the increase in, in our services and so i just feel like we're really on a good footing and uh, it feels good to have a good team and uh, have a good plan thank you nothing nothing for pamela tracy how about you um i just want to thank um marvelous technology so that I can be sitting here under the plum tree and uh, with the with the birds in the Samish Island area and um, being able to join you guys. I appreciate all of you guys that have been willing to step up and um, uh, add to the to your responsibilities, but also add um, things as we continue to educate and continue to grow in our positions on the board. So I would appreciate that. And that's all I have this morning. Thank you, Tracy. I kind of want to be out there with you. It's really pretty. <laughs> it, 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 was, yeah. it, was, it was a gorgeous sunset last night. So it was just gorgeous. All right. Thank you. Paul. Well, first of all, I'm really glad to see Greg back. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad we'll be back. Secondly, I, I'm glad that you will be our chair for another year. I hope that you've done 
a tremendous job. I've, I've seen a lot of boards come and go on a lot of chairs, and, and you have by far been the most uh, directly involved and active. So I'm glad that we get another year of Thank your leadership. You. Thank you. That makes me feel really good. <laughs> and the other thing, just a reminder, because I have a lot of people on the board, but um, there's a risk if an email goes out, for example, from you or from Mary uh, of information and a board member replies to all with that message. Uh, because if we were ever under scrutiny again, a case could be made that we were meeting via email. So I would just say that it's uh, safer if you want to thank Mary for something that she sent out, just reply to Mary and not to the whole board. Yeah. And that helps if if we do have if I do and I if I have to send out an email to you guys, I try to blind copy it so only one of you or when you reply it just comes back to me and nobody else. So oh, that's and the only emails I'll send out is if there's an announcement that we are going to have a meeting or something like that so you can be prepared for it. And then Mary posts it to the public. So that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Charles. I want to thank you, Debbie, for a little bit rough year that you were here, and the last year was a test and a trial for all of us. Uh, but I thought you handled it with a strong hand. And that sort of, that I, I've known Debbie for a while. That sort of quiet confidence that Debbie has, although sometimes she calls me at night and <laughs> panicking. Not about this, but other things we work together on. Not, not about we, have, we have other things we work together on. But, uh, so I want to thank Debbie for her uh, for her leadership. I want to thank Paul for stepping up there last year, my brother. Appreciate it. And uh, welcome back, G. Hey, thank you so much. All right. All right. Thank you. And I appreciate all the confidence you guys showed to me. So, and the help, because without, it's not just me, it's the whole group. We're a team, we work together. So, without you guys, I wouldn't be doing the job I'm doing. So, will you keep us honest? <laughs> it's, sometimes it's I, I heard this a long time ago. Sometimes it's like hurting kittens. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, financials. Kelly. Good morning. Uh, welcome back. Good morning, Kelly. Thank you so much. Uh, we made it through our year that was very, very, very rough. So thank you guys for your support. been long but we did it and we made it through another budget cycle that was much better than the one that Paul and I went through for last fiscal year so excited to move forward with that um, you know we finished at about 91 percent of expenditures and you know so we were a little bit under budget so that was awesome that was we worked hard on that to be able to, to come in there um, Nothing really major. I'm working on uh, submitting our reimbursements for Q4. Those are due to ODOT by August 15th. Um, so Jennifer and I work on you know, all the final reports for that, and then we go to Craig. Um, so working on that. Um, going forward, I will be looking for a new accounting system. So that's still. I've got a couple in mind. There's a couple of other districts um, within Oregon that I'm part of a, an alliance, and they're looking at some some new software as well. And so you know, I've kind of got to pick their brain a little bit too. So that's helpful. Um, so we'll start moving forward on that soon um, so that we can work towards finding something that's going to suit us better, I think. Would there be any chance when you find something you think you're, might work that you could actually visit the site that's using it? Like if Hood River was using something that you liked, maybe oh, yeah, we can facilitate that spend a day share. or two shadowing that person. Because I think that would help a lot. So you would know how it worked before right. you. And a lot of times you can reach out to, they'll give you a list of people that use it. So you can reach out to them and ask them, you know, what do you think? Or, you know, 
how does this work for you? What kind of problems do you have? What things are good? You know, those kinds of questions and, and things, you know, to somebody that's actually using it as opposed to somebody that's selling it. Right? Yeah, a day on site would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, a day on site would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah somebody local that, you know, difficult to sort of put in emails. It's a little, little bit, there are many things they just tell them. Right. Why would I do that? Right. Um, yeah, I, th I would really encourage a visit. Yeah, absolutely. If we could do something like that, would be awesome. Okay. Any questions of Kelly? I don't. Go ahead. So we are even speaking with the uh, ODA. Everything is going great with ODA. We are getting our reimbursements in a timely manner. We are getting our stiff uh, every quarter in a timely manner. Our payments are going. You know, our loan payments are going as they're supposed to getting the information a month ahead of time as to what our invoice looks like for our loan payments. <coughs> so at this moment in time, things are going great in that aspect. Thanks. I have a quick question. Uh, as some of you know, I'm on the SIU 503 board, so I'm creating some of this information. Tell me, how does uh, ODOT's budgetary problems affect us, or does it affect us in any way? ODOT doesn't give me any information like that as far as their budgetary issues um, or non-issues. But it doesn't affect us, right, in terms of reimbursements and things like that? Um, technically, if ODOT does not have the funds uh, to send us a reimbursement, they don't have to send it. It's in our grant agreement. Okay. Could so, it be uh, toward for us to ask Isla if she has any things she wanted to share with us? Here. She it's, share. It's, at your, it's at your discretion. So right now it's the highway that's having the problem. So that's Federal Highway Administration um, because gas tax is not covering the maintenance and repairs to the roads, such as the like the white line striking and you know hole patching and stuff like that. Um, the Public Transit Division is doing well, and we deal with Public Transit Division. Thank you. You know, I just can't wrap my mind around ODOT being broke. Just, but anyway, <laughs> with all the electric cars that are coming on, and the the better the cars that get better fuel mileage, as we've been progressing all these time to get here, okay. that's what's affecting it because they've ne they haven't raised the gas tax. Oh, okay. And so they've been going on antiquated gas tax pricing. And it's just not enough money to be able to keep the maintenance going. Right. And there's only there there's the money they get from the Federal Highway Administration. Yeah. None of it can some none of it really can be used for the maintenance. It's for construction and stuff like that. It's basically the color of money, and you can only use it for certain things. So that's where they're running into trouble because most of it that maintenance comes from gas taxes. Okay. And I know this isn't anything to affect us, but just raising the gas tax, I don't think would be fair to people that still use gas. They should do, need to do a mileage tax, in my opinion. And why are we not moving toward at least some way? ODOT's had that Orico in place where you can pay by the mile and get a credit for any fuel taxes that you pay. But it's really not catching on, especially, you know, if you got a vehicle that doesn't get good gas mileage, you're not going to go on there because it's going to cost you more in the long run. Okay. So, right. Thanks for that information. You're welcome. Thank you, Arlen. Mm -hmm. um, yep. <clears throat> a couple of questions on page uh, seven. Uh, one is the uh, internship grant. And I was wondering if that should be set up like other grants in terms of uh, money received, money going out, or not? I mean, it's a little bit of a different kind of grant, so no. it's not set up the same. It's not a no dot grant, yeah. Okay. And then um, with the loan, what happened to June payment? The payment was made in, in May. It's made once a quarter. Oh, so it's not made in June. It's made... Right. It's made when we receive our stiff funds. They okay. take it right out of the top. Okay. Great. Yeah. And so, so you'll see it again for August. Okay. And so is this the time to go talk about cash flow or not? Go ahead, whatever. Okay. So on page 19, uh, what I, a couple of questions. One is, 
why is um, LGIP funds not included in the cash fund? Well, so you have, you know, mass transit and property taxes. LGIP is the um, actual bank account, the name of the bank account. The funds that go into that account are property taxes and mass transit. Oh, so it's a bank. It's a, a bank account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. Okay. And the other uh, is with the contingency fund. So yeah, it's listed in February, but it's not listed anywhere else. So that's sort of that's the month skewed. in which the money went into that account. The contingency money was was put into the contingency account. So that's why it's an expense. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Rebecca. Okay, I, I want to get back very briefly since it seems like we're moving on here, but <clears throat> to say that you know, in terms of um, you know federal funding, you know, obviously you know nothing stays the same forever, and uh, you know we we but what I would like to see is to make sure that we are a part of. Um, you know, lobbying for, you know, some really big changes, you know, I mean, do, do we have those, um, assuming we have those associations that we participate in that it, encourage innovation and, and uh, so that they're hearing our voice in order for us to, um, you know, how is this impacting us? And so that goes all the way up to, to the feds and, and uh, you know, they need our information and we're not that that's our, our duty is to actually express that so can you tell me so I can make a quick note here as to what are the uh, associations or you know the methods in order for us to be heard yeah, at the, the OTA, federal level yeah the OTA is a wonderful organization specifically for um, stiff and their uh, actually this legislative session uh, trying to get an increase in funding uh, for STIP for transit. Um, we participated, Jennifer went in my absence to uh, tell them uh, they're doing a road show going around the state. Uh, various legislatures are going there advocating for transit. People are testi uh, testifying about the importance of transit yeah, in their lives that. and all that. So, yeah, that's probably our most uh, critical alliance that we yeah. participate in. And do you think that uh, it's it works as a method for um, expressing our needs and absolutely and it's pretty robust so, absolutely well it'd be great to um, I know that you know we do we do talk about um, OGA but maybe we could step up a little bit of uh, recording on that and yeah. just to brief us sure. so that we could better understand we can do, you know, do yeah. that and um, yeah. bolster sure. our, our voice in that process thank you Tracy Tracy. I got one. I got one uh, question for um, <clears throat> Kelly. So maybe we can get Tracy back in a minute. On page 19, on the projections. So in March and June, there's quite a spike in wages, taxes, and benefits. So I know you're paying something quarterly. Can you tell me right offhand what that is? Or I'm assuming there's something quarterly. So June probably reflects, um, as we brought back the Route 15 in May. So that's gonna, that's gonna bring that up. Um, there's some raises in there. Uh, there is, in June, our benefits go up. Uh, the next fiscal year. Um, and then we're also looking at us. There was one like three days in it. Yes. And then oh, you that two. Yeah. yeah. So that it's that too. That always throws that off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I knew there was some reason. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Tracy, are you there yet? I have a message to him to let him know that you called. Okay. Thank you. We <laughs> if he gets back, we'll, we'll let him come back and ask his question. If that's all right with everybody. Okay. Anything else on financials? Thank you, Kelly. 
Thank you. All right. Um, Mary, would you add the financial statement? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Charles. Kelly seems to have found her wings. And I want to thank her for, for really awesome good work she's doing. And uh, I, I hate to tell you that. <laughs> uh, but you seem to have found your, found your wings. And I like it, frankly. I think it's a benefit to the entire board that she has because she has answers. I read it that she said, let me get back to you on that. And doesn't so, uh, but you've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it. That's it. I, I, yeah, and I think I tell tell her that when I come in that she is doing a great job. Yeah. And also, you got to give Paul credit for this too. Uh, he played an instrumental role in getting his budget going. Yeah, uh, and working with Kelly yes. to make it a reasonable budget that actually worked for the district. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't have done it without Kelly. So. It's true. Don't forget Tom. Thank you, Grasshopper. That's dating myself, I know. <laughs> Didn't John retire right after this? Did we like He's getting ready to retire, yes. He overworked yes. him a little. Yeah. We're referring to John Dreesen from yeah. Columbia. Yes. He was yes. very helpful. He was very helpful in being able to give me a lot of the tools that I needed to be able to do things with how to move forward. So. Um, Mary, would you enter the financials into yes, the Thank you. Next on our list, number 10, A, is Executive Director Evaluation and Compensation. So in your packet, you do have the um, evaluation that, and I want to thank Paul and Guillermo for being on the committee, Mary, for helping us out. Um, if everybody would like, I'll go ahead and read what we came up with. Okay. So, Craig, this is all for you. You don't got it. <laughs> I think it should be that. Okay. We took um, surveys from the board. So, these are pretty much the board surveys. We did take surveys from the staff, or from staff. Those were anonymous. They did come back really well. There was only a couple of really low scores, and that was more to do with not having had a lot of um, connection with Craig yet, and that was from a couple of the drivers. But the staff also gave me pretty high marks overall. So, under leadership, Craig has implemented a short-term plan to address operational and financial needs in the district's recovery. Weekly staff meetings have been well received by the staff and have increased their involvement in district issues and management decisions. Craig has created a more productive environment for staff and drivers. He has successfully completed all requirements set by ODOT for funding resumption, including policy updates and budget drafting. Craig's leadership style encourages creativ creativity. He has met ODOT's request promptly and received positive feedback. Overall, Craig has exceeded district expectations, ex establishing aligned goals, motivating employees, and improving work culture. Under man management, Craig has effectively analyzed the district situation and implemented short-term strategy. He displays adaptiveness in managing changes, change, and risks. Craig's management style and demeanor are strong and confident, making him an ideal, ideal fit. He has reinstated regular management and staff meetings, presented a PowerPoint to county leaders to highlight the district's progress and future plans. Through his efforts, the district has transformed from despair to hope and achieved an achievement. Craig's planning, organization, and critical thinking skills are exceptional, consistently achieving desired results and goals with confidence and clear explana explanations. Interpersonal skills. Craig has the support of his staff due to his open door approach, regular staff meetings, and encouragement of individual participation. He has excellent people skills, communicates in a caring environment, and keeps the board informed with no surprises regarding, regarding staff and employees. People management. Craig has shown ad, admirable people management skills and aims to establish a district culture that promotes self-commitment and cooperative achievement of goals. He empowers staff without micromanaging, as observed in monthly board meetings. 
Craig has successfully restored all routes and has introduced a lunch reward for employees of the quarter to build trust and rapport. His open door policy fosters better communication. Additionally, Craig has been instrumental in mentoring Kelly, the CFO, on government accounting through instruction from John Driesen. Overall, Craig excels, excels in his role as executive director, demonstrating a comprehensive understanding of the district's purpose, operations, and management. Political and bureaucratic skills. Craig's face-to-face -face meetings with civic partners have successfully garnered committee and community involvement and support. He also formed key partnerships with local government for a successful transit district. Additionally, he responded promptly and professionally to demands from ODOT and others, displaying his ability to work well under pressure and negative conflicts effectively. Administration. Craig has proven to be a visionary leader, reviewing and keeping effective policies while eliminating those that are ineffective. He understands the importance of transparency for emergency planning and has already implemented measures such as board members receiving bank statements and quarterly invoice reviews. Although Craig did not receive a list of goals from the board, Craig has played a crucial role in the district's recovery and has shown competence in policy development and agency administration during challenging times. Self-awareness. Craig is open to feedback, able to accept criticism, and willing to make changes when needed. Court interaction. The executive director has made himself more accessible to the board with his open door policy. The board chair has more access to the director, allowing for impromptu impromptu visits. The chair always feels welcome, and Craig is accommodating and reschedules if needed. Craig allows leadership to grow and listens. Craig should communicate his Craig should communicate his support needs to the board. Craig has demonstrated his willingness and ability to work effectively and transparently with the board. Overall, Craig has quickly gained the support of his staff, civic leaders, and the board through open communication. Despite his short time in the role, he has proven to be a successful executive director. We have high expectations for Craig's future with our organization and the local community. The board encourages Craig to continue engaging, engaging with community leaders and to improve service and routes. Overall, Craig is an excellent leader and the board hopes he remains in this position long term. It would also be beneficial for Craig to establish goals for employee duties, clarifying responsibilities, and attend conferences to enhance the district's performance. And then suggested goals, maintain 70% or better <clears throat> on-time service rate and less than 2% early service, increase service route hours as funding allows, like adding 101D and Route 13, present a quarterly state of the fleet report to the board, present quarterly grant status and funding report, including applications and process to the board, continue to develop strong relationships with, continue, with community leaders, managers, and other service providers, and respond and report on the progress of the RLS findings. <laughs> you know, I, I just want to say I'm very humbled by this review, um, especially with the last five weeks, what's occurred, all the all the encouragement and kind words people have given me. And then to come back to this, this is just amazing. Um, I don't think I deserve a review as good as this, but um, I hope to stay here a long time and continue doing what we're doing. Excellent. Excellent. It's been really um, a total different atmosphere since you walked in the door. So much easier to get information. Uh, I do feel like I can just pop in on you. you know? And I don't like doing that very often because I know you're busy. So, but yeah. We, we have a good working relationship. It feels like everybody's going in the same direction. So, um, 
with that said, I would like to make a motion that we increase Craig's salary by 5%. Can you give us a little background on that? Um, I'll that Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would second. But if you could provide a little, you know, clarity. Okay. So we know where I do from. have kind yeah, of a I worksheet can. that I worked on, but I don't have a printer. So, um, but I can pass it out to you guys. And maybe that'll help. Give me copy. And the public can have some too. And I'm sorry this didn't get in the board pack, but um, so I. I had uh, Sue get me some estimates of what other directors make. And this is, we've seen this kind of before in the past, but if you look under Craig, saying he's the first one, right now he's at 104.5. If we were to give him a 5% increase, that's about five $5,000 a year, a little over $5,000 a year. Um, and then I went and I added with the benefits that he gets and the others from Tulma, Wigman City, Josephine, Columbia, Columbia County is way overpaid. John deserves it, but he gets paid a lot more than anybody else and in the city of Canby. Um, even with a 5% increase, he's, Craig's not making quite as much as the rest of them. Uh, he, right now he does only have 26 employees the only one that has less is Columbia County in the city of Canby. I did put numbers there if we wanted to change that 5%. I could do some work with. Can everybody read that kind of? Yes. Okay. And I have talked to Kelly and that has worked into the budget. We have enough in the budget to cover that. Thank you for the clarification on that. Debbie. And um, I do agree that I think that is an appropriate amount. So we already have a second. Okay. Any other discussion? Mary, would you take a roll call vote? Commissioner Usman? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Commissioner Wiki? Yes. Commissioner Lagria? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yeah. Motion passes. Although I should be asking some questions. This is a, I thought I heard somewhere in the narrative that this is a six month increase with the idea of reviewing it again. Is that how that's going to look at all? No. This is for the whole year. This is for the whole year. Okay. I, I his, next, his next evaluation will be a year. Okay. Now. Yeah. Thank you all. I think you're being too generous. <laughs> Thank you very much. We also want to eat Yeah. Okay. All right. On to personnel policies. Policy. some issues with them and I will go through my issues and we can go from there. I, before I start, I also, I'll, I'll get you first. Yeah. Um, I do see the need to get them passed, but I also did see the need for some edits, updates on some of them. Rebecca, did you want something yeah, before I, I start? Yeah, I uh, agree. I think that, uh, we all, in order for the board to embrace this and to, you know, work, I think we, we have to have the advantage of working on it. And I think we need to do that. I think there are things that we, you know, can improve on. I think there's some issues with, um, uh, you know, union uh, input and uh, the presence of union. 
um, for the benefit of the employees. Um, and I, I need a more in-depth walkthrough on this so that I can feel comfortable with it. So however we, I'd like us to discuss how we're, we're going to um, have a better understanding exactly of, of what this means and if, if it needs it means that we need to do a work session on this and, and have a little bit of guidance on this, uh, I think that would be appropriate. Charles? Uh, I, I also feel the need to get it passed, but there's some things in there, just a small thing like gender referencing, I think that needs to be looked at. I saw some him and hers and she and he. I think we all know we're way beyond that as far as gender referencing. And uh, some, of the, some of the things that make it uniquely ours, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, But I understand you need to get it passed. That's why I want to hold that up so they can get fixed. Guillermo? Yeah, I just like to say that, uh, again, as some of you know, I was a union steward for years over here at DHS. And, and uh, at the present time, I'm doing a rotation for the union as a contract specialist. So I've been privy to a lot of issues regarding this kind of subject matter. And uh, I agree with some of the comments that have been made. If we have a good foundation regarding employment guidelines, it'll help us in the long run to minimize our work in terms of issues that might come up. So, uh, yeah, this. I, I agree that we have to refine this and because there are certain things in the marketplace today that are more uh, emphasized and uh, we need to uh, be on top of that to again prevent issues that might come up in the future. Pamela? Yes, I agree that there needs, you know, you know that uh, Sue put a lot of work into this, but there are some sections uh, policies, etc., that need to be discussed. I'd also like to propose that when we're given something of this magnitude, 130 pages, that we automatically have a work section on it so you don't you can discuss it more and not waste time at the board. And, and yeah, and that's what I have to say without any specifics at the moment. Charles? Should we should we approve this? Because I think you can't go you can't go without a policy. Well, we have policies in place now that are just old. Yeah. So my question is, do we if we were to sort of fine tune it and do some things we were discussing, do we have to have to approve it today and then then vote on or the amended policy later on after some discussion is had, or do we or we just not approve it today? Would the Kind of what the vote is for, I see. So we could, we could amend the motion to say we approve it today with a work session where we can start going through it. In my opinion, there's quite a bit that needs to be done. Um, is it something that we want to have a work session on, and I'm sensitive to what you're saying, or is it something that we want to give? To our executive director and say, will you go through these and make them um, specific to the district's uh, needs uh, and then go from there? Um, I, I would hate to take this task away from staff when it's really their responsibility. It's true. Yeah, it's true. And, and then if it comes back and there's still issues, you know, then we can go from there. But you know, Greg may have the answer already. I don't know what discussion he may have already had with Sue or with the rest of staff, but I think he deserves that opportunity. Yeah, sounds good. Pam, did you have anything else? Uh, yes, I think that my feeling is that uh, if we're going to change things, then we just say that the motion doesn't pass. So it's nice and clean instead of all these amendments so you know what you're working with. And I think, uh, you know, a combination of the board and, and Craig would be a nice uh, 
get together in terms of different opinions and uh, some of the experiences maybe the board have, has had, um, for example, harassment. I have a real problem with harassment. But anyway, that we could all chip in. The other thing that Craig could do is pull his own committee. He could, he could name a committee of maybe a board member or two, a couple of staff, maybe a union rep. You have to have a union rep. That could go through this. One of my big things is there's no mention of union in here at all. And the union contract supersedes every single one of these policies. So I went through, I did some research, and in just three, I pulled up three policies, one from Clatsop County, one from the city of Astoria, and I have a friend that's on the city council in Rockaway. All three of their policies mention their unions in there. And in the disciplinary also, it, show, it will show what the union reps are responsible for, that you have a right to a union rep. And I think that's important to be here. So, uh, Charles? Dr. I believe we have a motion on the floor, so we should withdraw the motion, should we vote, and depending on it, depending on it. Um, I would just like to um, add that our whole policies are um, remiss of not having some policies in there, such as pregnancy being an ADA. These have all the updated policies that maybe aren't even in our current policies. And so this is a much better template to keep us legal in the interim while we work on um, the revisions that are um, you feel are necessary. But as far as putting something in place that is um, a better legal document than what we have currently, I would um, implore you to please pass these with the caveat of um, coming back with an amended. So, Paul? I appreciate the, the richness with which Pam's and my approaches differ slightly on some <laughs> issues. Uh, but I also think that we should pass what's been uh, submitted at this point. There may be some policies that are fine the way they're written, uh, and there may be some that only require small tweaks. And it's going to end us up with the policies that uh, are important that need to be revamped. Yeah. Uh, if need be. Um, I don't think that it will be confusing or get confusing, but what to me would be confusing is if we take the route of not approving these, set up meetings to correct them, bring the whole batch back to the board again a month or two from now, find that there still needs to be changed so we don't approve them and we take them back. I think they should be approved the way they are, have the understanding that as with any policies, they're reviewed regularly, they're updated regularly to stay relevant and current, uh, and at, at, at least we will be compliant today, and going forward, we will constantly move toward the set of policies that we're comfortable with and that reflect our needs. And that's my recommendation. I can agree with that's you. what I was getting at, Madam Chair. I don't think we should be without a policy. And we don't approve the policy, we will be going blind. But with the idea, making those corrections or amendments or take, separate taking some things out and then come back and refine and then vote again on the policy later. As each individual. Yeah, yeah. I, agree, I agree with both Paul, Paul and Charles, but I think what's essential is we put a timeline on it, a time timeline, time dates, so we can get them done and make a vote because we're all so busy and sometimes we need, we have a tendency to extend that. Exactly, because these were originally put in the March agenda and we put them off. They were supposed to show back up in April and we've been busy and it's not returned until today. So I agree if we're going to do that, we need a timeline. Yeah. Emma? Okay, well, Paul, yes, we do agree here in terms of uh, legality. The question I have is, you know, I hadn't thought about that is if we approve this and there's something in there 
that supposing the issue comes up, we want to change it, what happens in the legal stance? So the document, if we approved it now, if something came up. I don't think, because well, I read these really close. I took time and I read every single one of mm -hmm. them. I don't think there's anything in there that's illegal or anything like that. There's just some things that I think need to be changed Mm -hmm. to make our, for one thing, to make our employees feel more respected. Um, when you're done, right. so you start mean, hand up. There, right. there are some policies you're not going to be able to change because yes. they're um, dictated by law. Right. But the ones that, that are um, exclusive to the SETD policies, those, you know, you can um, make some changes to. And, right. you know, possibly, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Anyway. That's no. And maybe you could just sort of note, you know, like, you know, like, put oh, a little. The entire section will be changed to what is agreed upon and then replaced. No, I meant in terms of what's legal. The, you know, the, all the, the regulations. All right? the well, FLMA type stuff, yeah. all the leaves, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, put it in a different color or something uh, so that we don't mess around with these are the change. HR answers and SDAO. Um, uh, and the other question I had, which doesn't matter at the moment, but does our, has our lawyer looked at this? Um, I, I, I um, yes, I, well, no, let's just say that I did put it before Spencer, and he just said these HR answers policies are fine. Who's Spencer? Rockwell with SDAO. SDA, these are a judge from SDAO. Oh, so Josh doesn't look at these? Josh is with Spencer, Josh, Matt. Okay. Thank you. If it's labeled. Label. Call question. Okay, question has been called. Mary, will you take a vote? Yes. Commissioner Gusman? I will approve. Commissioner Dell? Commissioner Lucky? Aye. Commissioner Allegria? Do you say approve with amend future amendments? Do you say that? We're, we just approve two different things. Just yeah. go to yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner McDonald votes aye. Thank, Thank you, you Tracy. <laughs> Commissioner Withers? Aye. Commissioner Reed? Aye. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, our charge to, to Craig and, and Sue would be to make necessary changes, updated changes based on our discussion, and then we present this to us at a fixed time date. I would make a motion that Craig convene a committee to go over the policies as written and do any updates or revisions that need to be done. I would ask that he have at least one board member, one staff, Sue Farmer, and have it done within three months. Three months. Three months. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion on that? No discussion? I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. Commissioner Lucenet? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Lewicki? Yes. Commissioner Allegria? Okay. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Motion passes. Yes, I'm a bit upset. I've spent a lot of time on this stuff, and it's changed back and forth, back and forth. We have something from September of 2023, and if, if uh, our work isn't um, for nothing, then I want to know. I have other things to do to delete this over and over again. And then all of a sudden, first it was said that, oh, you love it. There's nothing wrong with the last meeting. 
and now you don't love it. This policy has not changed. So I think there should be some consistency and respect for the work that we put in. The, the 2023, we received that, and Sue, you might have to help me on this. It still, it had gone through HR answers, but not SDAO. I think it got I didn't bring it to the board without both reviews. Okay, that really isn't the point. The point is, if we're to, you know, do what well, I feel that I should do the best I can, and then it's just thrown out. I mean, either we, uh, this is the work that we do, or we don't. I can, I can work at other things in life. Charles, I don't think we're throwing it all out. I think, I think with. With all things, we're fine tuning it. We're not I, that is over. not the point. The point well, is I want to that I've worked okay, I, on this and spent a lot of hours, and I think it's for almost nothing. Okay. And I, I don't see why the board isn't involved in this. The, the board isn't board. involved in personnel policies. Then why did you ask us to approve it? We still have not? to approve it. Approve something we have no say in? You can't go, no. Yeah. No, I, I don't think I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't see that work as being wasted. I think that we've had a good discussion here, and I think that it was uh, in part supported by by your concerns, having read those and, and your desire to get to where we want to get. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think anything was thrown out. I think as a board, as a governing body, I think we've moved the process ahead. I don't think we'll ever be at a point where all policies are right. perfect and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to the fact that we all have many things to do in our lives and I understand it can be frustrating. And I've experienced that myself. Sometimes you put a lot of work into something, nobody else seems to see the value of that. But I see the value of you spending time. I think it has helped the process. Charles? Yeah, I respect Pam, what Pam has done on this last year. I worked in the Virginia legislature for 12 years, creating bills, reading bills, and I've never seen a, 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 a bill not change before it becomes law. I mean, yeah. this, is on a, this is on a smaller scale. So when I've worked on this, <coughs> 1,500 pages, and was happy to do it, and then it changed. It didn't change totally. The bill was, in essence, its broad approach was the same, but there's always was fine tuning and tweaking that went on because no bill ends up a, a, a law by going through a metamorphosis, really. So I appreciate your help you've done, and it's, it's, it's taxing and it's disappointing when, when the hard work is it's sort of changed. That right? isn't what I said. What I've said is that, you know, I've made comments on that, and I'm sure all of us have, and that these are included in the discussion. That's what I, you know, I've worked on policy before. And of course, it goes over and over again in terms of, you know, changing things and accepting those changes. But that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I would like to present anything that we as, uh, individually as a board, individuals, uh, what we have, comments we have, that's what I'm saying. I, I think we'll have the opportunity to do that. Mary Sue again. Oh, <laughs> Normally, the process for personnel policies, and there was a big change between the last one that I submitted to you and the one um, today, because um, Hayden Oregon and um, um, Oregon Family Lead Act changed quite a bit. So those changes have already been made in these policies that you received today. Um, but normally, the executive director has the uh, um, authority to revise policies. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's an internal. It's not a board. Um, that's the way it's been at the county where I work when we did policies in the school district. Um, but most policies that get changed are uh, when the laws change. Um, you know, so that's those we have no. There's there's just no um, discussion because you just have to change it and update them and. Set them out and make sure everybody signs and yeah, then they receive them. Well, I think what we're asking for is to make these these mm -hmm. policies specific to our needs. I think that's and a great so, idea. You know, I think we're on our way here. We've got a good plan. Yeah, but I just did want to uh, let you know just put that in there that 
Oh, the ch they've already, they've already been changes because things change all the time. Mary, do we have to do the resolution? Yeah, we probably should. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, resolution two zero two four dash o two, a resolution adopting personnel policies. Whereas it is in the best interest of the citizens of Sunset Empire Transportation District and the employees of SETD that certain policies relating to employment by SETD be clearly set forth. And whereas the SETD board has reviewed this manual of personnel policies for employees, and whereas the adoption of these policies appears to be in the best interest of SETD and its employees. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Sunset Empire Transportation District that the personnel policies attached hereto are approved and adopted as the policies for all employer, employees of the Sunset Empire Transportation District, and that these policies supersede any previous employee policies and resolution 202401 super, supersedes all previous resolutions pertaining to SETD personnel policies. I, uh, yes. I'm sorry, is that, is that what it means to say <clears throat> that these policies supersede previous employee policies and mm -hmm. 24 dash 01 supersedes all previous resolutions? Is that accurate? Because we already had another resolution this year. Yeah. So I didn't change that. Okay. How would yes, that resolution? I mean, how should we modify that? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I can change that. I can correct that. So we got resolution 24 01 should be 02? 02. Yeah, it should be this one. Okay. Yeah. And we had this resolution and then we waited so long we had a resolution that we came in front of it. Okay. Yeah, it was our budget resolution. Okay. And I say aye. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Wicky? Yes. Commissioner Allegria? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner yes. Langry, I didn't hear you. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Mary. Um, moving on to 10C, Pacific County Interlocal Agreement Update. So last month we did approve this, but they had the wrong name. They had our name wrong on it. And Craig's name spelled wrong. And in the meantime, they have added to this. I'm going to let Jennifer mm -hmm. take this whole. Because she's. <laughs> Jen, I'm going to let Jennifer take this because she's been yeah. working on this. Absolutely. Yeah, so after last board meeting um, and requesting the changes uh, from, I believe it said Sunset Empire Transit, and so we're actually Transportation District. So just those small changes. I believe they misspelled Craig's name. The uh, general manager at Pacific, uh, they dated it 2023. So th those small changes, I sent it back to them, asked for uh, those corrections. And then um, they realized that they have been um, needing to transport the dialysis uh, patients that they transport over here um, to do rehab um, at the hospital. And um, so they had uh, requested an addition to uh, this to allow for that uh, transportation. And this is curb to curb that they're doing. They have small buses. It's not their big Pacific Transit bus that you may see here at the Transit Center a few times a day. So this is curb to curb um, scheduled rides uh, that they're bringing because Davida closed in Long Beach. There is no dialysis unit over there. They're bringing them in here and then now taking some to the CMH for rehab and then home. So it's a long day for them. And this is just their clients from over there. Mm -hmm. They would never take one of our clients from. Okay. Correct. Pamela? No, oh, I think this is an excellent. I'm very pleased with this. Very pleased. Um, yes. I think it's very much. Yes. Thank you, Pamela. Charles had mentioned.
question about liability from when we first reviewed this. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm concerned a little bit about liability in terms of if there's an accident with either, is that not an issue or, or are we covered? What? Well, they're not using our vehicles, they're not using our drivers. It's totally separate. Totally, totally separate. Totally service. Totally separate. Yes. So we're in the make we're in the three for just being good looking people. Oh, allowing them to come over on the yeah, courtesy. In our oh, zone. Courtesy yeah. to be over to be over here. Right. Right. In our zone, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're working together. So if an accident in their uh, vehicle occurred on Sunset's property, is there a liability? For sunset, <coughs> they're not even on our property. They're transporting from Long Beach Peninsula area to the diet for Sinius okay. Kidney okay. Care to CMH back to the peninsula. And just to alleviate some fears here, has our lawyer reviewed this? Does he need to? Yeah, we can do that. I mean, I'm just trying to protect the district. That's what we're trying to do. The board has a policy that says that contracts will be reviewed by an attorney. So, unless we change that, we can update the policy. So, really, uh, they don't come on the property. We don't have we don't handle the patients, and it's not like the point of us. It shows up. They show up. You know. We yeah. Okay. We don't have anything to can really do with. Them. So. I guess we need a motion. I move to approve this um, interagency uh, agreement. Can you say updated? Because I, I, I move to approve this updated interagency uh, agreement. Thank you. And can you add one more thing after the attorney? Uh, and after the attorney has reviewed it. Second. <laughs> I would I'll, I'll it. second. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Yay, Tracy's back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. He um, any other discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Passes. Okay. Um, new business 11 committee assignments, transportation advisory committee. Um, I think Deanna was our liaison for that one. Is that right? Um, does anybody want to volunteer to take that group on? Pam? They do meet, I think, by Zoom also. Are you asking do I have Zoom? No, I'm saying you can attend by Zoom. Oh, okay. I think they, they do do their meetings Where by Zoom. I think it rotates. I think it rotates. Okay, and then the Northwest Area Commission on Transportation, I have been attending those. If nobody has any objections, I would like to continue. The, the Transportation Advisory Committee usually meets here. Oh, okay. It's a, it's, oh, it's, it's that's, yeah, that's, it's, oh, sorry. It's, sorry, Pam, I was confused on that. Looks like, uh, you know, uh, grants, plans, and they have to agree to those. Okay, I'm sorry. The process. I, I was thinking of a different approving group. grant. Okay. okay. All right. So those are those two committees. Um, moving on to discussion, board meeting date and times. I know last month we kind of got messed up a little bit, and we met at ten o'clock. And I kind of heard from a couple people that they kind of liked. The ten o'clock. Um, so the board gets to set their dates, times. I kind of think we should meet at five a.m. and get it over yeah. with. Yeah. You know. Okay. Six 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 so this would be a good time we could if we're tired of meeting on the fourth Thursday. Hang on, Tracy. I'll be right with you. If we're tired of meeting on the fourth Thursday, we could change that. If we wanted to change to evening meetings, it's up to the board what they would like to do. Tracy, go ahead. So um, I thought about this when this 
when we started having this issue um and i have meetings i'm okay with thursdays um i will i'm just offering a compromise um as some like to start early at nine and some like the 10 o'clock um i'm just going to make the suggestion of 9 30 on the same thursday i kind of like that tracy True. <laughs> um and i think while we're talking about this i think we should also discuss every six months doing it in seaside an evening meeting. That was a boo. I like that. Now, yeah. where, where does uh, uh, the uh, need for, you know, uh, work sessions, would those be at, when, as needed, or would we put that on some kind of a schedule? Um, I've been thinking about that, and I, so I've been looking at some of the other agencies around the area, and they either have their work sessions before a meeting, or after a meeting. So I would suggest if we're going to have work sessions, so we're not screwing up two days for people that, and I think we would limit a work session to an hour at a time. You know, I was thinking, you know, one another compromise of some kind is that <clears throat> if we do have a uh, week that I wouldn't be uh, objectionable to having from 10 to 12 have our, our meetings on Thursdays and then the 9 to 10 as needed would be for work session because it makes sense to have work sessions before because it may pertain to the agenda um, and then that really isn't really burdening us with you know a, a totally different time frame for, for the work sessions like the, yeah I'd like the 10 start and the, the uh, hour ahead for work, work sessions also like the seaside once every six months, uh, but uh, I think that would be my with a lot of notice. <laughs> well, well, not if, wash, but if, for them. Yeah, I think if we're going to do seaside every six months, we'll figure out which months we're going to do those today, and we can put out a schedule like tomorrow. Well, all right, Mary, maybe not tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to do Paul first, then. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. My preference would be to keep the meeting at 9 o'clock, but of course I support the board. Uh, and as far as saying Seaside every six months, I, I would opt for saying an alternate location and time every six months because we may not be able to get a spot at Seaside and we may decide to have it someplace else. I don't know, Gearhart or Kennedy Beach or... <gasps> Napa. Good yeah. point. Yeah, but I don't know that we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> However, I think the lock us in the seaside takes away some of our flexibility. Can those who live in can those us who live in Canada be tired? Well, board meeting here. Okay. We're taking a couple of minutes to get to it. Yeah, I think it's gonna take people a while to get in the groove of that to the public, but I think that eventually it would be nice to know that we do mix it up a little bit and we have an evening session. So is that published in Seaside Signal? Yes, but not in Seaside. That meeting, the meeting we had down there was. Okay. But, but yeah. regularly it's just the day list. But. Okay. So, if I can, Mary, good. Um, we've always had morning meetings. You know, in history, it's like 14 years here we've done that. But um, it, like it, for the public to participate, it really has to be after working hours. And just once a year doesn't seem quite enough. And I think it should be twice a year. And I'd be, I think it'd be nice to have an evening meeting in Astoria and an evening meeting in South County. Because I just think our goal is, I, I would think the goal is to get more people here from the public mm -hmm. that can, and once every six months doesn't seem like you're really going to get a lot of, uh, information or it doesn't feel quite as accommodating <laughs> maybe it should be so you just maybe want to be quarterly to have yeah. an evening meeting. yes and just you can have it here but have one so that people can come here after work i think it'd be great and so but it's just my yeah, suggestion okay now are we going to do this we have a few things on the table here 
Okay. So I think the first one we all agree, a meeting every six months in an alternate place. Place of time. And preferably evenings for those alternates. Well, I think if we just say place and time, then, then we could have it seven o'clock in the evening at Seaside every time if we wanted, or we could change it up. Okay. okay. And Madam Chair, I'll, I'll retract my 10 o'clock. <laughs> I can suck it up here. Well, I kind of like the idea if we're going to have a work session starting those at night. So starting our meetings at 10, and then if we have a work session starting those at night before the meetings. So uh, those are only on work session days where we would start the regular meeting at 10. Otherwise, if there is no work session, then then no, I think we need to, I think we need to keep our 10. I think we would need to keep it as as cons consistent as possible. So I think if we're going to do work sessions, and I think we really need to start looking into those. I think we should do our meetings at 10. If there's a work session, we'll start those at nine, but meetings at 10. Two meetings a year, somewhere else. <clears throat> and those would be evenings. And then shall we just start with one meeting here in the evening? Well, we can establish a calendar. And then implement the, this year's calendar. But it will be the same day? But It'll late. still be the, yeah, still okay. be the same day. I, I, I think we need to try and keep them, them all on fourth Thursday, Thursday, the fourth Thursday, yeah. except for our November, December, and I'm not going to we'll fix that up yeah we're going to work on that too yeah so how does that sound to you guys was that a motion no <laughs> not yet something like discussion i'm okay no. with it paul you're the guy that wants to stick with nine o'clock jason tracy chat um gets my vote he's good with anything <laughs> he's good with anything okay. so Okay, so I'm okay. So ten o'clock meetings, except for the two in alternate places. If we have a work session, nine o'clock. What about an evening here, or shall we just pick? So I think we we don't regularly schedule work sessions. So I think we work. Uh, sessions. I think we just don't clutter with the name of work sessions at nine, but we'll we'll know the previous month that we're going to have one. We say next month we're going to have a work session. Right. I think you throw out the nine and the ten and the six o'clock and here and there. So meetings at ten, so we can have work sessions when we need them at nine. Yeah, and I think we just know that, right? We'll, we'll decide that. Okay. All meetings will be at. All meetings will be at 10 except yeah. for the two alternates, and those will definitely definitely be evenings. Yeah. I personally wouldn't specify it. I would say alternate times and locations. And then we can always do evenings if you want it. But what if we want to have it at three in the afternoon for whatever reason? What if that's the only place, only time we can get the venue? Well, you know. but, but that does kind of compromise the uh, consistency factor for those away ones where people may not get it into their, you know, routine that, well, we don't really know when they have the meeting. Is it, are they always evening meetings or aren't they? You know, and we, we do know that we like to have a evening meeting for the benefit of people that are getting off work. So I, I see where you're saying, what you're saying, but um, for the consistency factor, I think it might be better to just nail it down and uh, it be an easy meeting. I like what does everybody else think about I kind of think we have more participation. That's what we're trying if, to do. If we could get a calendar kind of like right now. Yes. And then we could publish it. So, okay, when did we have our meeting in Seaside? April. That was a that was a three meeting day, right? It was yeah, a work session. Well, yeah. we canceled one of those. And then, 
Yeah, those three. But, but what I was going to say was we should really do a calendar. Sit down and do a calendar and then present it back to the board, I think, because of all the other things that are going on. Like we, we combine our, our November, December meeting. And, and then it would come to, then we go into the budget. So to add, you know, maybe the evening meetings at a different time of the year than when we're trying to get budget meetings secure might be a little, a little bit easier on the board. So I, I just, I'd like to see it. So I just, so if we had alternate meetings in April and October, mm -hmm. that really doesn't hit budget too bad. Or, or, the, or the heavy, um, down the seaside of South County, the tourists. We want to, we want to have it before. Those are good, and it's not you know dead of winter. Yeah, for transit. Yeah. yeah. So well, April is in the budget cycle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So usually it begins beginning, but we usually start our meetings in May. Oh, okay. Usually, fifth of May, third of May is usually our first meeting. Well, that'd be all right. Yeah. Marcus a great break, so you don't want to have south. Or we could do, okay, no, this is not, I should just shut up. Or we could do March and September. But still, September's a little bit. No, I, I, I think this is April, October. April and October. But let's, I'm trying to remember, did we start, I have to look it up on my phone, but did we start at 6 in, in Seaside? I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, okay, yeah, we did. okay, 6 p.m., 6 to 8. So those two, so can we agree those two months would be alternate places? Okay. Evenings for April and October. Okay. And then the rest of them, 10 o'clock. And work sessions at 9 to 10 if needed. If needed. And I think we really don't have to be saying, we've been putting out a public calendar. Yeah, we wouldn't have to really say anything about work session. Right. But that's the thing. Does that kind of work for everybody? But I, I think there's value in getting that out to the public yeah. so that they, and the reminders, you know, yeah. making a splash and getting out to the public. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Last time it was at the Holiday Inn Seaside, right? No, last time it was here. Yeah, we just had it. it we just had one more. Oh, ago. that one. Okay. Yeah. Was before that was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So was that what was that our April? Uh huh. Yeah. So we should have every April we should have a strategic planning. You want to do an update to see if the strategic plan is being worked on. Yeah. You know, because there's that. But mm -hmm. he then passes to the director if he makes the goals that match what the board has put as priorities. And so usually a report in, the, in your meetings knows that you're on track, but just in case. Right. And I think that is separate from uh, board training. And I think board mm -hmm. training might be able to fit into uh, when we, you know, like a work session. So, you know, we're not just having all these separate things going around out there. If the work session can be kind of a multi purpose uh, special session, is that sound okay? And I want to say, I like earlier, that. That, that makes sense. Okay. Go ahead, Mary. Earlier this year, you had, and I don't remember what meeting it was, but you had proposed having a work session every month, yes. having or scheduling them. So this will work with that plan that you had already made. Yeah. You really wanted to see more things being done on a monthly basis. Yeah. Yeah. And taking some of that off of the agenda of the regularly scheduled board meetings. Yeah. So we have more time to discuss. Yeah. That was my intent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. All right. November, December board meetings. I'll look at what we did last year. It was on the sixth. I think we did it. It was in December, wasn't it? Yes, and it's usually the first week of December. Really, really, usually the first Thursday. Because the fourth Thursday is going to always be on Thanksgiving. So, yeah, we I see December 30th. Mm -hmm. November 30th. No, so, November. SETD combined meeting. November, November, 30th. November 30th. Oh, that's, excuse me. I think November 30th. Yeah, I think we did it on November yes. 30th. Okay. Just think the fourth Thursday of November State every year. I don't know why we can't be on Thanksgiving. Bringing the turkey. Bringing, bringing the pie house. <laughs> so we're going to go to the following week, December 5th, this year. Could do it November 31st. There is no uh, there is there. There. <laughs> is Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. Was I'm that sorry. Was that was that was no, I'm sorry. I was, I was thinking of beer. <laughs> my calendar is all screwed up. Actually, I was looking at Halloween, but that might be a little early. That might be a little early. Yeah. December fifth sounds good. December fifth. Yeah, that's it's good. just the week after. We, that's it. Wait, we get to December. December fifth. That would be a Thursday. <laughs> I'm good with that. That way, we don't do Chris. We, we, oh, we miss Christmas and Thanksgiving. Not in your folks' So December 5th? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. It's a good segue here. Great, great, great. On right. scheduling. At 10 a.m. I like it. <laughs> I'm going to, just, just for you, Charles, I'm going to call it an 8 o'clock work session. <laughs> Is there an eight o'clock in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> There's one in the morning. That's right. Okay. Okay. So our November, December is going to be no, or December 5th at 10 a.m. And then the holiday party. Well, uh, I'd like to hear from uh, the staff as to what seems to work best for them as a lead, lead us on, on, a, on dates that might be conducive to our workforce. Well, I think first we need to determine, do we want to have something similar to what we had last year, like a potluck here, or do we want to do something? Here? Only we would like you to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, if you're asking the question, I'd like to see it at 
a different venue. Yeah. It was a bit crowded. We, we've had some pretty nice holiday get togethers at, at uh, the Legion. The American Legion. The Burmese. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Maritime. Yeah. And at the seaside. one in the Seaside. That was a good one. Yeah, we too. had the Minimums where we had to have catered. You know, they had the Minimums and the Legion was the last two or three times we did it there. But we had a, oh gosh. So silver salmon is catered for us. I just we, we just had a lot of them yeah. at different locations. The offside, I think, is better. Yeah, like that. Yeah, we're not. We don't have a kitchen, and you know. Well, we even know. if we so, were to, if, even if we were to do a potluck, I think we need a bigger venue anyway, because it was pretty crowded, and we've got more employees right now. But I guess we could ask do. It's what can we afford? Yeah, 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 yeah so I really, so I like the, the lean and mean right now because we're I'm just like coming idea. out of, you know, we're, we're not have deep pockets right now. Do I have any idea what the, as it's picked the seaside, event costs, cost us? We're talking about the, the Christmas party we had at the seaside. At three, 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 three to four thousand. But that includes, besides the food and the rental, that includes gifts, that includes. You know, the total, yeah. Would we be opposed to a bigger venue, but still potluck? I like Some place wanted to bring, bring food. Bob oh, Chisholm does. Oh, yeah. And you yeah, they have a kitchen. They have a kitchen there. It's a big enough venue. It's not overly expensive. Where are you? Bob Chisholm. When we had our... Yeah. $200 yeah. for the year. We just didn't. What did we do? That was where I see that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. meeting, but I, think I just brought, oh, it was a funeral, sorry. <laughs> I brought food. Was, yeah. You guys, as a former employee at that location, uh, I would be proud to be there. So it's it's a nice it's a venue. It is. So it's very popular. So we're going to make a reservation. Say, you want to get better, take a date. Yeah, I, I would just uh, submit that. I'm sensitive to uh, our fiscal situation as well. However, uh, we'll be finishing up a couple of tough years where everybody has worked hard. We have uh, foregone some uh, holiday parties in recent years. Um, and I don't think that there's a thing wrong. As a matter of fact, a case, positive case could be made for uh, a little celebration, uh, a little employee recognition. Maybe that should be the theme. Uh, and if it costs us four or five thousand uh, dollars, I don't think that's unreasonable. I think it's affordable. Um, I mean, if we look at our bank account now, it's going in, in the right direction. Frankly, we're going to have to start offloading some of that excess at some point. No, <laughs> oh, sir. I mean, if you get the five million dollars in the bank, Kelly. Uh, we're going to be confiscating your passports. I like but those numbers. You must have overheard us talking. <laughs> I like those numbers. I want to see those numbers increase. It's, it's just a thought. I don't think that we can. I don't think that we can go around down indefinitely. I think that it's a time to recognize what's been done, recognize the season, recognize the people, um, and cut this with a quarter or two. My God. Um, uh, Hang on, just a minute, Tracy. Okay, sorry. I think it's a morale booster. I think it's a it's a it's a thank you to the employees or the staff and the drivers who have toughed it out. And I think I'd really not see Pablo because you end up with five five veggie plates from Safeway. And and uh, so I think I, I think it should be catered, not high end catered, but you know. You know, Charles, I think you missed the turkey. <laughs> that well, I, like I said, the last one I was at, it was five veggie plates from <laughs> Safeway. You know, the other thing like, about I, the party, Charles, is it gives an opportunity for everybody to bring in their first house. That's the other. Yes. Um, yes. You know, in a place where you dress up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. So, I, Tracy? So, um, Mike. Might I suggest that we do something like Bob Chisholm and uh, get a caterer? Several caterers work very well in that venue. And um, 
that would be kind of a blend, a blend of, of uh, saving money and, and in turn, uh, uh, being able to appreciate and folks won't have to um, deal with uh, all the potluck. I'm getting a positive on a catering from Craig over here. He thinks that, you know, we could bring in our pop bottles to help out, I guess. Deposits on our pop bottles. Yeah, <laughs> we we caters provide a bar as well and a bartender because we can't have alcohol where us with a bartender. So that's kind of a nice thing to add to it. Okay. And just to find it's reasonable, if you want to pay for it. The venue's the room reasonable. Is $200. Yeah. If you leave it clean. And we can leave it clean. Okay. So, so, so we have our date. Oh, wait. Do we need the date? Yeah. Well, but it sounds like we, we're we okay with uh, Bob Chisholm. If yeah. we can get it, we yeah, need to good. have a right on that. Well, before we start picking a date, someone needs to contact Bob Chisholm and those Christmas dates fill up. Seven, the, we, we don't have many options here. We have the 7th and the 14th. The next is Christmas Eve. So we have two dates, early Saturday. 7th and 14th. I mean, yeah. the 21st is But if months. it's on a Saturday, you know, what do people think about, oh, well, no. it has to be evening. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's it dinner. could be like a Sunday during the day. Kind of thing. I don't think so. You know, the, the best one in recent memory uh, is that one that we had at the at the Legion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They had music, they had a dance floor, they had a bar already there, uh, they had people to help with the food, the cost of the facility was minimal, there was plenty of room. It was the it was the most relaxed. Um, you know, and, you know, correct me if I'm we don't have the employees too. So. Well, that's going to help a lot on cost, isn't it? <laughs> well, so that is, a, that that is a good reasons. argument about American Legion because it's really like one stop shopping, and as opposed to Bob Chisholm, there's probably a few, you know, various things you would have to do for that. I would ask that you look at each of those locations when you're trying to, you know, we, get a proposal. We must be a reason for that. Yeah. It's so very economical. So very maybe very we good. maybe I can propose this, Mary. If you jump on it fast, yeah. See what and then see whichever date yeah, you can absolutely. get the seventh, fourteenth, or twenty-first. Is that too late? Twenty-first, yeah. probably too late. Yeah, that's, that's too late. late. Would you? How about a Friday night? Yeah, that was. The I think a Friday. Th yeah. Friday, Friday or Saturday. Saturday. Okay, I'll see what I can get. Friday or Saturday, if I can, can I add just it? a little bit of information? Usually when we have a uh, Christmas party, holiday party, uh, we'll end routes early. So if you do it on a Friday, we'll have to end routes by 4, and they usually are done at 8.30. On a Saturday, you only have to, yeah. we only have the Pacific run. So if that makes a difference in your decision. So I, I think would we say, have to shop around for venue, because if we really have only a couple of dates, we're going to, have to find what's open. I will do this one. So we'll leave it to Mary. So we're going to have to leave this open till next month. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a big thing now. I'm not going to party in the parking lot. <laughs> I just, How do you give them into the bill? <laughs> in an ice cream. <laughs> Mary, this is your mission as you decide to accept. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm so, Mary, you can bring us back information next time. Do we really need a lot of that? And I would say, yeah, I would say just whatever you find, just okay. get it when you Lock can it get in. it and bring us the information. Okay. Okay. Correspondence. You want to, yeah. this is your correspondence? Okay. Yeah, so, um, we crafted a letter to uh, send out to our budget committee members who were so helpful in uh, facilitating the passage of our uh, fiscal year 25 budget. Um, it's a thank you for them participating in the process, and uh, hopefully they'll continue to do that in the future. Nice. Well, well done. Well done. Okay. I like that. All right. Executive Director Report. All right. 
Um, I didn't make the press time for my report. It's just fine. So I'll just verbally, I've been back since Monday. Uh, I'm getting back into the swim of things, getting caught up. Uh, we're working on our reimbursements that we'll be filing uh, by the middle of next month. Um, uh, looking forward to what's coming up, uh, we're going to be working on getting our four buses with the 5339 grant that we have. We're working with uh, Kimberly Staunchfield, out of, uh, who's a member of the OTC as well. And acquiring those buses. Me and Jennifer will be meeting with her on uh, Monday. What's that? These are uh, like 12 and 2 passenger vehicles. So they're more like air transits. Air transits. Yeah. So it can be dual usage. Mm -hmm. Not the one on one route. No, but the other route. Yeah. So, okay. so 2 to 12 passengers, did you say? 12 and uh, 288 passengers. Okay. Oh, I'll oh, put 88. And so you're thinking about when this would be. Oh, years. Years? Well, uh, we're, we're, we're a little hopeful here. Yes. Things have improved a little bit in the uh, acquisition of vehicles. So. Have well, you cut the PO on any? Not yet. But no. you, got, well, you got the grant agreement? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so how does this work? You have paratransit and microtransit. Well, these vehicles could be used for either of those. All right. Any... Uh, a note of good news, RLS, who was going to do an uh, audit on us uh, beginning next month, has postponed their audit until 2025. And it wasn't our fault. So. Uh, can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, our, 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 our RLS audit that normally occurs every three years, um, it was going to occur next month. And uh, due to some scheduling conflicts <laughs> not created by us, um, it's been postponed until 2025, so it gives us uh, even more time to prepare. All right, uh, now let's go over the uh, fixed route rider tip. We did see an increase. Most of that increase can be attributed to the uh, Route 15, but uh, as you see, we, we went over 9,000 for uh, right, of the month. Very good. Next slide, Jason. Uh, paratransit, paratransit's kind of like topped out, uh, went from 843 to 734, um, we're just uh, continually plowing along. What are you that to? So much, so much lower now? Not necessarily, um, it's just a different animal than the fixed route. But it's your most expensive it operate is. too, so if it goes down a little bit. As long as we're servicing everybody who needs it, that's fine. As long as we're available. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key. Uh, Route 10, uh, we saw a little dip there down to 1413, 1591 uh, from last month. Go ahead, Would that be because the kids not riding it maybe summertime? Sometimes no. you'll have one less day in a month. Or, you know, I mean, there's little variations okay. like that we can uh, attribute. This is the nicest one. So we did 368 the uh, first month of operation for the Route, team, or Route 15. And we've gone up into the 600s on the second month. Excellent. And what's the contributor for that? Are you... People get used to the schedule. Once you establish any service, I would look for that to uh, increase next month as well. And where were we pre-April 2023? What were the, does anybody know basic numbers on where that route was? Uh, was it running? But I mean, before we shut down, before, before we shut down, like what kind of ridership? It was average it? about 40 a day. Okay. 480? Four rider, 40? 40 per day. 40 day. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Route 20. Saw an increase of wow. in an each seaside run. Is that true as a jerk? Oh, yeah, a lot of tourists right now. I've noticed more of them catching the bus. I think I might. Well, the indicator in Cannon Beach is, is Hemlock. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, so if you drive down Hemlock, the bus comes there to, to 
Coastal Theater then turns. Mm -hmm. I noticed some people catching the bus there on the return route, on the route coming back to come to Seaside, probably. And uh, so I think it's catching on. I don't know why, but uh, it seems to be catching on. Yeah, if you look at the ridership numbers from October through, uh, I mean, it's just like over triple, almost four times from when we started. I mean, it just keeps. And, and that's workforce. A lot of it's workforce. It is, but I never used to see the bus stop there. It just return and go. And uh, work for, uh, uh, and also at the uh, Chamber of Commerce pickup stop. And I, I, I assumed it was it was tourism. <clears throat> All right, next slide, please. There's the 101, or as Jennifer likes to call it, the Monster 101. Monster. <laughs> Keeps chugging along. And is that basically a number say before um, April last year? Um, these numbers? Or, you know, is that kind of um, equivalent to uh, before we had it closed down last year? Uh, now, are we I at that? We've gotten to that point yet. Yeah, and it's a different route than it was before. Uh, Craig and I were talking on Monday that we probably need to actually maybe even start looking at and reporting on riders per revenue hour. We're going to see a difference. That's where we need to judge this year against previous uh, uh, shutdown. That's going to give us a more accurate where we're at if we had a major increase in ridership um, based on the uh, service we're providing now. Because we can't we can't compare apples to apples. Yeah, you know it's it's yeah. So we were talking about that. And this Route 101, July, August, September is the Monster 101. There was nothing else running. And this slide I wanted to show. You know we started everything else, the 10 and the 20 in October. So we you know ridership went down with those because those riders went to the other routes. Okay. And then other routes are running. And, and 101 is still increasing. And so, because we, I was talking to Craig on Monday that I wanted to see why, you know, our routes, you know, yes, the 101 changed in October also, you know, where is the increase in ridership? I feel like the buses are fuller today. Drivers are always commenting, the bus is full. Jason rides a lot on the bus and he says, the bus is full when I ride. And, I don't feel like we were getting a lot of that before the shutdown. I don't know what's the next route. I don't know. People are um, changing their schedule around. Um, it, you know, if the demographics have changed, you know, ridership has changed. Uh, we have more population. It's just, it'd be interesting to see what Some more trends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jennifer. Yes. I ride the one-on-one -on -one on the seaside in that short year. I've never seen the bus full that as much as I've seen it full recently. Recently, uh, it would be 15, 12, 15 people on it. Now I get on it and it's full often, so it never seems different. Well, we had we had two on the ones before the shutdown. Correct. Still go right. It explains that. Okay. So looking at that rider for revenue hours going to give us a better <clears throat> idea of what it was before um, shutdown versus today. It might still be that same number, but like. Uh, Paul just said that you know ridership for revenue hour might be the same as it was before, but it's just on one bus, <laughs> not two. Um, and then, well, we'll look forward to when you see some trends that may need to change with the, with the uh, service pro providing. It, it'd really be nice to get a little bit more detail in that, so we're informed about it. Yeah. So this is a full year. All these slides are what we did, you know, our full last, you know, we're in a new year now. Um, so we now we can judge against what we did last year. Um, so we're going to get really good numbers and moving forward. And just looking at the big picture, um, we were doing you know, like 12, 5, 13,000 uh, before the shutdown. And with this, we're over 9,000 with the fixed route. So, very good. Yeah, so it's. Even though we're on condensed hours, we're really mean and lean, and we're transporting a lot of people. A lot of people. Can I ask yeah. you what would you think would be the next um, uh, 
enhancement of our services. I, I think I probably ask this every time, but you know, you don't know until you know. Is that right? When you can add more uh, groups, service hours to a route. Or well, routes. I, I would think uh, maybe extending the 101 a little bit, maybe adding another bus there. And then maybe with the feeder routes, what I consider to be feeder routes, like the 10, 15, and 20, maybe supplementing that with micro transit. Mm -hmm. um, I was, and in, in my travels this, this last particular month, um, I spoke with people that do a lot of transfers, bicyclists that take their bikes, um, that they're able with the schedule now that they're used to the schedule um, will bike either to work or uh, shopping and then coordinate uh, other feeder routes. So um, it, it's if we can encourage the feeder route idea, uh, then we can build on that, I think. And uh, it would be a good, a good addition to our uh, repertoire of things. One more question is, you know, a lot of, I see more people uh, using the electric bikes and aren't they a little chunkier? And um, can the uh, holders contain those better? Jason's our uh, e-bike. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, they are bigger. Typically, they're, they're considered fat tire bikes, or they use a 2.5 inch, which is a little Little, little too big to go in all of our current racks. You know, but to be honest with you, um, we see regular bicycles that are on there that are just a few pounds shy of an e-bike. So um, most of our buses would be able to handle a regular e-bike. It has, has blown up quite a bit recently. There are a lot of people, I've actually travel trained several people this summer who have e-bikes and they're great first and last mile options. So anything as we look forward, you know, to, uh, Assets and everything, as long as they, they have those little wider racks, we should be okay with that. Oh, that'd be great because I think employees, uh, you know, workforce is using those. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right, next slide, Jason. And our weekend Pacific connector kind of took off with uh, June being a more heavy tourist month. So we saw a really nice increase, our biggest month with that route since we uh, <coughs> Yeah, we That's it. Thank you. The, number, the numbers on that route, since we share that route with Tillamook, we don't share, I mean, it goes from Tillamook mm -hmm. to here. And then if they want to go further talk, they have to get on all this connector. So we, we take the numbers that, I guess if you get on the, the Pacific Connector in, in uh, Tillamook, mm -hmm. you get off of Cannon Beach, that we, can, we, count, we, we, as a, we count that as a, as a, as a, a full ride, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Once, once somebody boards our vehicle, that's what's counted as a ride. Okay. Yeah, just because it originated on another service, you know, coming into town, doesn't yeah. mean we don't count. Every time they get in, you count. But it's not double dead in that kid, but it's not twice, okay. And what about the 26 bus? The, um, the other, the point bus? Yeah. I mean, we're. Point bus? Oh, that's us. Yeah, so it's. I mean, the lower the Columbia. The lower Columbia. It has a regular schedule. And, There's no lower Columbia there. Yeah, no, it's just, oh, okay, it's there's, the point. what's going oh, on the with the Columbia connector then? Well, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't connect with Columbia. Okay. All right. I, I always get confused with those two. Thank yeah. you. So the point bus goes on 26, so Highway 30 okay. has nothing right now. Okay. It, 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 has anybody heard anything about I don't think we've had a chance. I know we talked about talking to Columbia County and seeing... Oh. Right. If we could meet somewhere in the middle, oh. but that would be in the future. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just want you to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good you have to include Multnomah County to get all the report on any watch, right? To get to go all the report in Columbia, this Columbia 
expect to have the bus to pick up in St. Helens and go all the way into the new station. They did that years ago, if I'm correct. Um, yeah. So, but that's still a ways off. They just well, want some service in Columbia County. Okay. Okay. All right, you're up, Jennifer. Uh, besides what I've already written in my board report, I just wanted to add that we do have two buses, um, Kaya, you have in a, um, we, um, that need some major repair. One is definitely classified as a major repair. I got ODOT approval to have a transmission replacement uh, for one of the newest buses we have, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and then the other, um, it's also a sister bus, um, we just found out we've had maintenance working on it. It's been out of service since early spring. Um, and we are in dire need of these two buses to be in service. Um, they're the R box. They're primarily on Route 10 and Route 20. Um, so we have two down. Um, and so this other one has been out of out of service since early spring. Um, and our our maintenance has worked on it feverishly. They've he's been commended by. A local shop and then where the bus is currently a beaverton chevy and they have commended him also for all the work and diagnostics that he has done so we have a an amazing mechanic um, who you know obviously is learning on the job they just notified us yesterday that they're going to replace the wiring harness and an injector and so we're hoping um, that that will be the end of it and we'll have that bus back uh, tomorrow and back on the road um, so that's good news for us um, but if it's not the solve, then the, it's undrivable. So that's where we're at with that one. And then um, our own shop's going to do the panty replacement. So that's a, that'll be a huge savings. Um, when you have another shop do a transmission or an engine swap, <laughs> yeah, you're talking tens of thousands. So um, what would then, be the option if, the, if that second one couldn't be repaired? Then what? Where do we go? Yeah, I don't know. I was gonna. What's that? Just yeah. Purchase another one. If an engine um, or a Chevy shop can't fix a Chevy engine, I'm not sure where we're. Yeah, we'll have to discuss that with ODOT and Craig, and I'll have to um, figure out what we what, what we can do moving forward. Back to the potluck for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, Here. So, and then Craig already mentioned that we're meeting next week with Kimberly and she'll get us move in quickly with this grant that we already have for four new buses. So, that, that's exciting. Um, as you know, currently there's uh, 800, or now at this date today, over 800,000 acres on fire. We've all done our OSHA mandated uh, smoke or wildfire smoke training. Uh, we have K95 um, masks for staff. Um, so just wanted to assure you that we've had training um, on this. Um, and we also do heat, uh, OSHA heat illness training. Um, so we've had to implement some of those rules in the last few weeks uh, with the heat and the uh, making sure only buses with AC uh, go out on the road and then staff and offices um, have adequate supply and then we're supplying drivers with water. So, And then the smoke, you know, the wind can change any day and, and we're going to, as we have had in the past, um, experienced um, that. Uh, we also are on call. Uh, so it, it's always been a policy procedure that buses are and all um, vehicles are fully fueled and ready to go. Tillamook uh, had caught on fire a few years back. We were on call. We were ready to be there um, and almost uh, down there and help uh, transport and evacuation uh, with them. And so, um, yes. in our, we have a, um, good emergency planning and coordination with the county. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have an MOU with CMH. I think we talked and about that earlier. A couple facilities, year. yes. So, any emergency, that is the reason we're fueled, not just for wildfire. Um, and we could be called at any moment to uh, evacuate a facility or half the county. So, or and somebody else. Connecting people <coughs> to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. The hospital. Mm -hmm. 
And then, where we did we talk also about you know uh, some emergency shuttling of people to the hospitals, or, or there, there was some discussion about that I mean, evacuation or maybe. Well, the MOU is for CMH, so if CMH oh, itself was right. evacuated, or one of their facilities had to evacuate for you know their situation, um, and it's whatever their plan is the placement uh, where they need their riders uh, to go to. Um, okay, so it depends on the, you know, the situation. Um, and then we have hired a driver supervisor, uh, Chuck. He's uh, currently a driver with us, and so he will be continuing to drive until August 12th, and then he will uh, become a supervisor, and, and that will be a PM supervisor position. Mary, how long has Chuck been with us? Um, he has my years in August. Yeah. So that's exciting news to move. That's showing you know to moving back to where we were. We don't. We only have one fixed route supervisor who is also doing maintenance supervisor. Um, he's lucky to work eight hour days. <laughs> uh, he works seven days a week. Um, and so he's got a full plate. So it'll be really nice uh, to have Chuck on board and, and moving forward and taking some of that relief. Rick. Um, and then we also hired a new transportation support specialist. Um, Stephanie's a transportation support specialist, but she's based here in Astoria and she primarily works with the fixed route system. <coughs> this support specialist will be uh, in Warrington and um, and working you know with the her, her scheduling, but then all the ops, data entry, you know, the things that you know, vaults and deposits and uh, all the hands-on things that we do over there. And Chuck, uh, I wanted to add, um, he will be working here 12 to 5, five days a week. So they'll help with that safety concern here at the transit center. Um, you know, being able to be, work with the drivers and the riders. And so it's really encouraging to all the drivers that have a supervisor over here five days a week. So. I didn't have any other things to add to that, uh, my board report. Did you have any questions? Yes, not on the report, but have you ever considered having the bus actually go to the uh, Warrington's bus barn? In other words, <laughs> that's so funny. I feel like somebody, this was Jason and I were just talking about that really? yesterday. Um, and that's funny. So there is the housing that was just uh, apartment buildings that have been built. Um, they have a lot of the residents work at the seafood plant, um, and then the building next to us that looks just like ops. You know, there's quite a few businesses in there. We are access to the river walk or whatever that is. Yeah, and so we were talking about that, um, and I think they have plans. He and Jonathan have plans to um, um, visit the apartment complex and see what the ridership need is. Because right now they are walking to the mini mart and riding the Route 15. And it is, we see a, quite a few um, people walking to the seafood plant. So it, would you actually, if you do extend it, to extend it to the bus barn? We do not let public come to the bus barn unless there's no other way. It's not, it's just staff only. Um, so the route would just stay on Skip It On, go down Fifth, or it would stay on Skip It On and turn down the street that's just after the apartment complex and goes down by the Baptist Church that's before Ops. But, um, so those are things that we had talked about, pros and cons of, um, you know, would we have ridership and what would the ridership look like? The only reason I mention it is a little ironic that an employee cannot get directly to the best bus barn on the bus. Right. Yeah. Liability involved family family. So, I mean, we could do a flag stop. We could, we could stop on skipping on and they could get off on skipping okay. on, but not pull in. We wouldn't pull into the okay. facility itself. So, so you would be half far? From skipping on? We're on skipping on right now. Our building is it's on skipping on. on. Yeah. They could they could actually flag stop right there. Right now, an employee could flag stop right here. Well, I've actually walked to the bus barn, which is a life threatening 
No, because I love trucks. Well, I love trucks. And that's Jason's case to me. <laughs> so many love trucks. Yeah, yes. And the other people that are walking are Canada workers. They are going to the Pacific Coast, Canada yes. down there. So. Yes. There's a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. You're Sue? Yes. Thank you, Jennifer, for reporting on our new hires. Yes, sorry. We're still looking for a mechanic. Um, and in a band, we, I just wanted to report that we had a great rural transit day. So I went online and got some ideas to, uh, you know, kind of enhance that. So I did a little picture, took everybody's picture, all of our employees, and a rural transit hero. And then it had the pledge underneath, and I put them on all their lockers and doors. And, so everybody was recognized, and then we had treats, and um, and then the pledge was posted on um, the big group table, and then I had American report on all the good stuff she did for, for the public. <coughs> Any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, we're well, looking for how many folks are doing this. I'm a can mm -hmm. help out mm -hmm. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Mary? Good morning. Um, well, I'll just keep going on the rural transit day. Um, you had an ad in the paper, there was publicly announced it. Um, this year we didn't put, last year we put the pictures of all the employees, but uh, this year, um, Jennifer wanted to change it up a bit and feature <coughs> our streetcar in the ad, but we put the last names of everybody that works here on the board. I don't know if you saw the ad. But it was a full page ad. It was supposed to be a half page ad. I don't know how it grew to a first a full page ad, but we only had to pay for a half page ad. Anyway, um, then we had refreshments here all day, and Jason was here all day, I think. Uh, Jonathan. Was. Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan. I was waiting the bus. <laughs> yeah, okay. Was here all day. So we had. Somebody representing us out in the transit lobby, and it was it was nice. And then and then the drivers got treats. We brought treats and stuff. That, that was nice too. Um, I wanted to talk about the military ride for free. Um, uh, Jennifer had said, and "Would you tell them what you, she sent me an email about how well it's going? Do you want to just talk about that a little bit? About it's really been going well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drivers are constantly getting." Uh, appreciation, thank you. Um, you know, it makes a difference. But, um, they feel valued and, and seen, and so uh, to, for the free rides for veterans. Um, so, the, and that also goes over to the paratransit. We have quite a few on both sides, and, and it's uh, definitely noticed. And we are tracking it. We're going to start um, showing those numbers. Uh, they have been tracking it since you approved it, um, and so we're going to make a, a column our data entry and, and a show, you know, because we do students also, so. Oh, daughter, anybody ever wanted that number? You guys ever want that number? You can see that our ridership has <coughs> grown. You know, that might be one of the things, the free, free rides of students, free rides of veterans, you know, that might definitely show us from month to month, year to year. How is the uh, ID process to, for the beds? So right now they just show what they already have in their pocket, which is numerous options. Um, and then those that have a challenge, Mary's made up a packet, and so she could probably share about that, of how to. Yeah, and also examples, there's an example sheet for the drivers that show different types of ID that has the ID number on it. So they don't really need another ID number or another card, particularly, they don't, because they have that ID. If we develop a card, a, a separate card, um, they would have to come in and here to get that. So the idea is make it as easy on them as possible. Um, no other complications. They can get on that bus, and the driver says, you know, welcome aboard. So um, <clears throat> we'll move ahead on that, but we have not done that yet. Uh, Jason is going to be the lead um, because of his, you know, program too. But we just have to update our policy. That's the next thing we have to do is make sure that our fair policy includes this. The, the, the military ride for free. I also I want to have something in our shelters at all times. One of our, an announcement in our poster on our shelters 
that's always there that says military right for free. So if anybody comes into the county at, at, at either end and in any way, if they go to the bus shelters, it says right for free. So something we have to make sure we do. Um, Fourth of July was great. It was the, the best part about Fourth of July was that, that to be in the Fourth of July parade and that the trolley in the streetcar is operating again and can do that. We were going to do it last year, but there was problems with it. And so now it's ours to use. So hopefully we'll be in the organic parade with that as well. I met I met Jennifer the first time. Mm -hmm. She was a driver for uh, the Regatta Parade. And what we had used to do for the Regatta Parade was go to the care centers and pick up um, <coughs> residents there and have them be in the parade with us. So maybe we can do that this year. That'd be great. I don't know about the streetcar, but the seats are a little, yeah. But we took regular buses. That would be so much fun to go back and do that again. Um, I don't know if you saw the ad in the paper yet, um, just really focusing on um, encouraging people to ride the bus to the parks. I, um, I don't know if you know this, but Astoria has 30 parks in, in the city limits. There are 30, and our bus, the Route 10, goes within a block or two of every park, which is great. So the Parks and Rec Department are thanking us for, they said thank you for we're saying that the bus goes to all the parks. So we're trying to promote that. But there's, there's going to be an outdoor <clears throat> magazine that will have that ad in it um, that, the, that the newspaper's putting on. We'll have a big ad in it about that. Um, other than that, I've been working on getting things put into um, out, out the um, storage and kind of downloading our office a little bit because there's so many things that. Uh, that we need to move over there, so I've been doing that um, and talk to the archives over there. Um, the other thing I was going to say was on June 10th, I had worked here. I had worked here 14 years, and I want to thank you for my job. Congratulations! I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hope so. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, everybody did such a wonderful job of representing everything that the district is doing. Um, maybe I can add to some of that a little bit. Um, I, here's my report. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me on that. But I'll just hit on a few really cool things that I've experienced. So we've got the mobility assistant, as you know, and Jonathan's been a great help. He's been amazing in everything he's doing with us, and he's, he's a go-getter. Um, he's not afraid to jump out and talk to just anybody at any point in time. Um, he's really kind of concluded the level of training that I want for him. So now for the past two to three weeks, he's been just out doing stuff, which is pretty neat. But the one thing that has helped me out the most is the fact that I get to, again, I get to train somebody and learn through their eyes, which is it's really important for somebody who goes out to the community and trains them how to ride the bus. I need to learn through other people's eyes who don't know the program very well. So John has been giving me that opportunity and finding out, wow, I can learn a lot more just through through his eyes, which is pretty nice. So uh, your 4th of July definitely was awesome. We had a, a wonderful time there. <clears throat> My whole family got on the bus and we had uh, a couple friends and stuff. But I'll, I'll tell you, the, the coolest experience was, other than the workout that I got, was... Um, running out to the bus and shaking hands with people and giving them pieces of actually none of my stuff was candy it was all outreach stuff with uh, high vis vests and and, and and cool bags and all that kind of stuff but almost to everyone i shook hands with and talked with after, as i was watching the bus leave me um they were all very thankful for us in big big ways and i'm talking just young mothers with their kids and stuff saying, thank you, thank you. You know, then there was the older adults that I would shake hands with and they were just so happy to see the bus. Um, one of them were, were uh, very, very happy to see the uh, streetcar. The streetcar is incredibly popular, so let's keep that around for as long as we can. So that was really good. I was very, very happy to be able to be on that. Uh, we ran out of candy, we need more next time. So um, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> I hope some of you have seen the employee focus that I've been doing, some of the videos that I put out and stuff. Um, I, 
They're becoming the highest viewed. Uh, Kevin Bowers is fairly high. Uh, he, he's so engaging. Uh, yeah, so um, there has been a lot of viewership on him. And it's really cool. I really enjoy doing that. And uh, if any of you ever want to be involved in that, we can do a board focus. <clears throat> Jennifer is a very good interviewer. So um, please uh, let me know if you'd like to do any of that. And then um, just lastly, I travel trained recently a lady named Tiffany. And um, her biggest issue, and every, every travel training has a different, kind of a different part to it. I mean, some, it's specifically one disability that they're dealing with, or just some who just need a little help, just learn how to use the, the routes a little bit more. Just, but in this case, um, we bumped into her as we were traveling, John and I were working with somebody else at an apartment complex, and we literally just bumped into her thanks to one of our drivers who was their paratransit driver dropping off another individual. And uh, he said, hey, there's somebody up there who really needs to talk to you. And so fast forward, we go and talk to this lady and find out that she is newly uh, severely blind. And um, the experience I had with that, we, we had a wonderful hour <laughs> in, in our apartment complex. Um, but we, we found out, you know, John, and John and I were just, because, you know, we deal with a lot of people who, are, who have been blind most of their lives. And there's a huge difference between someone who's been blind for 30 years versus somebody who just became blind this year. And so we, we got to, I mean, we learned a lot just talking to her and, and, and we ultimately ended up solving and bringing a solution to um, her needs. But it was really, really, really cool. Um, she was very impressed with, with the bus. She's new to the area, um, but she's, she says, I see and I hear, well, I hear it. She used, she used still would say, I see things. That's how newly blind she is. She just, I see things. Like, and, um, you know, that's not the case. But the, the most important thing, though, was that we were able to get her in contact. Um, what the problem was, it was hard for her to communicate through email and through our website. It is very difficult if you're blind to, to do that, especially if you're newly blind. So um, she's offered to, to also be in some future videos and everything. So I'm hoping that as we work through that, she's very outgoing and very excited to help out in any way. Um, she understands the fact that being newly blind is, is different and she wants to share her experiences. So, so those are some of the things that I get to do, um, and I'm very thankful that I get a chance to do them, and other than just um, doing everything I can to help with um, travel training and uh, focusing on getting high vis stuff out to people, that's about all I got going, unless you got any questions. Good job. Oh, great, great job. job. <laughs> Thank you. Boy, that's really, you know, uh, your program in action. That yes. you're helping somebody else, the, the specific uh, yeah. need. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. Before we adjourn, I know we've talked about this a little bit about taking August off as far as our board meetings. I don't know. I think it would be a good opportunity for the board to maybe go on vacation, enjoy the summer, but that's totally up to you guys. Unless something comes up in the meantime that needs our attention, maybe. I'll be, I'll be gone out of town that time, so. You have, you you have laptops. You don't have to do everything, right? You have laptops. So Tracy can join us out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> barely hungry. <laughs> 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 so, do we want to take tentatively take August off unless there's something that comes up that needs our attention? And we communicate on a weekly basis. So. I like the idea of um, you know, we've got to be mindful of the deadline in order to get uh, the announcement out if we do decide to hold it. Right. Yeah. So, whatever that date is, Mary, you know, that would be our, our day to make the decision. Five to seven days. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, whatever we yeah, we know we need one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So vacation on? I think it's a great testimony to how well things are going. And then we can think about arbitrarily taking yes. a month off. That's kind of why I wanted to get some of this stuff out of the done today, so our meeting was a little longer than it has been, but if we can take August off. So August we will take off unless something comes up that needs our attention beforehand, and we will put out the word as soon as we know. All right. 
And if there's nothing else? Oh, I, I'm sorry, just for the record, you didn't mention all the committees. Um, we're going to leave the committees as are right now. Okay. You're talking about the policy committee and the evaluation. Yeah. So the policy committee, I want to leave until we finish the policies. The evaluation committee, the committee that's formed now, we're going to go and make procedures. What worked for us well this year, what didn't work well, then we will turn it over to another committee to actually do the evaluation, but they'll be named at a later date. Perfect. Okay. So here it is. Status quo. Quote. Favorite song from the 60s. See you guys in September. Meetings adjourned. Write the bus.